Um, so one of the themes that's been running through uh, this event, I think you've seen probably a couple of different themes. One is around moving beyond rest. The other, the other one is um, taking a more product stance and a more customer-centric stance on how we design, build, and manage APIs. So uh, we invited Amancio to come along to talk about this topic for us specifically. Amancio provides consulting on strategy, execution, and inclusive culture change to organizations who want to create customer value in the er area of digital ecosystems. Amancio is the co-author of the book, API Product Management, uh, which is all about product strategy and execution for the digital economy. So um, over to you, Amancio. Thank you for joining us. So thanks a lot, Saul. So I'm going to share my screen. All right. <clears throat> so hello, Australia, from uh, the long distance uh, from Switzerland. So if you would uh, drill down uh, uh, a hole from Australia right through the middle to the earth, you would end up in Switzerland. So it's uh, <laughs> really nice to be even online here in Australia. And today I want to uh, talk about API products and how to use them or how to um, leverage them for uh, business ecosystems and how to get the value out of it. So uh, as Saul already said, okay, I'm Amanti Botha. I'm the co-author of API product management. We started with this uh, topic um, several years ago at the te telecommunications company in Switzerland, Swisscom, where we had to reinvent or invent API product management to really get the value, the business value out of the APIs. So I'm also working as a principal IT consultant in a small Swiss uh, um, consulting boutique. And also uh, besides that, as a side hustle, I'm also advising several API first startups and providing my perspectives or insights of the markets or demands and needs. And um, maybe two months ago, I uh, bought uh, a new home, a new apartment, and was really, uh, uh, <clears throat> I was re really thrilled. So there's a empty space uh, coming from a three room apartment into a five room apartment. So now I really can uh, get my home in order because it was really completely chaos. I have a son and everybody, everywhere is our toys. So we went to the IKEA because that's our typically our main uh, uh, furniture stores. But at this day, we also went to other stores just to compare or find new furnitures to just get organized in our new home. So when the typical furniture stores, as we observed it, uh, they presented furniture or uh, chairs like this. So one chair after the other, in different colors, different shapes you can choose. Um, they are typically uh, described uh, by color, by size, by weight, by price. And it was quite, uh, um, um, took quite some energy out to really think, okay, how could that be in our new home? How would it look like? How would it feel like? The cool thing about it, IKEA, yeah, it has a complete different approach to it. So instead of just presenting uh, chairs by chair by chair, they show you what you can become. So I was really looking to become organized. And what they showed me here is really a room with organized stuff. So really with shelves, uh, with furnitures that support organization, with storage boxes, and so on. So what they really showed to me is really <clears throat> what I can become when I buy these furnitures and not just, okay, which colors and so on. So they really understood what I'm looking for. And now I can really imagine uh, um, how I could really become organized in my new home. And here on the left side, you see two hands. That's uh, from my wife. She just presented it to me. That's it. <clears throat> so. The point here is really that uh, most companies they are really trying to, to sell the thing, like the furniture itself. And usually as a, as a customer, you don't care much about, for instance, what APIs you have or uh, what flowers, what furniture, especially here in Super Mario case, in this uh, Nintendo game. Um, Super Mario is not interested in picking up a flower. Why should he? 
but he's really interested in saving the princess. So how can a product help him uh, to save the princess? So the flower is not something that he's looking for, but what Mario really is looking for, or also customers, is what they become after they use your product. In this case, if he eats the fire flower, he becomes a fire a Super Mario, and that gives him a new ability. With that, he can more easily, easier, with a, a less dying, save his princess. But instead of just a really um, a micro and uh, uh, having extreme uh, great control about how to jump on top of the enemies, he can just sit back, throw some fireballs, enemies uh, 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 just die, and he has really an easy life to save his princess. And that's what Super Mario is buying. This simplified uh, saving of the queen. And the same what the IKEA is doing. They show what you can become. And of course, you buy these furnitures instead of the others. They just sell the thing. And what does it have with APIs? Where are the APIs here? So it's not about the fire flowers or the ability. So the API is really the interface to this ability. That means the uh, API provides uh, uh, Super Mario an interface to shoot fireballs. Uh, you as an API designer or API product manager can decide, okay, do I have one button? Do I have a larger button? Or do I have a, a turbo fire button that you can just hold, press and hold, and it automatically shoots fireballs? That's what, you, what it allows to design for the API interface. But the ability or the, the value proposition of uh, shooting enemies to easier save the, uh, the princess, that's what uh, uh, is key here. So ultimately, the API is not the interface to an application, but it's the interface to a value proposition. And that's the key connection point how to build business ecosystems. <clears throat> but let's get uh, later to that. So um, I'm living in a new apartment, and of course, uh, I don't have much light bulbs, or I haven't installed yet some lamps. It looks really uh, uh, ugly. Um, the point is just here on the roof. I have just a hole with some cables to provide some electricity, and now I have to buy a new drilling machine to put in some holes and to put up a lamp. So that's really cumbersome. Um, it would be so nice to have such kind of a, a standard API interface, kind of, that you, can, that you can just plug in a lamp, just like with Lego bricks, they just stick together. And maybe that's the reason why just recently IKEA uh, and Lego announced a collaboration, so they are collaborating. So Lego provides storage boxes that you can really design, personalize to your own uh, uh, preferences that's sold by IKEA. So this is a really cool combination because IKEA is uh, a lot about com combining different uh, handles on doors and storage boxes to get this personalized uh, thing. Plus with uh, having Lego bricks, the ability to put some really cool uh, builds on top of it that you can even more personalize it to your, uh, to your preferences. And that's really um, leveraging the status quo to a really high new level. So that's how it looks like. So really nice. Uh, um, so I'm a big fan of that. So, um, but that's just a collaboration, right? Uh, or interesting combination. But um, Lego also announced a um, uh, uh, collaboration with Levi's. So you can even design your uh, clothes now with Lego bricks and personalize it. So when I now design my new closet, so I will have a, a one closet for business uh, clothes, one closet for leisure, and one closet for Lego bricks to just uh, um, personalize all my stuff. And this, and with this, you can really see here, Lego is not just creating collaboration, but it's creating an ecosystem. So they collaborate with IKEA, <clears throat> with storage box and so on, and with closes that you can put in IKEA closets it's creating kind of an ecosystem. So you have three partners sharing the same uh, vision about uh, personalizing, having fun, play, uh, and storage. And this creates an ecosystem. And that's really um, hard to fight off. <clears throat> and um, 
business ecosystems or partnerships and business ecosystems are really about co-evolution. So really working together to create the, the future. And that's what Lego is doing with his partnerships of IKEA and uh, Levi's. And who knows what comes next? Maybe Benetton, the, the, the house of colors, will uh, create new colors of Lego bricks or whatever. So it's about co-evolution, also uh, evolving a, an ecosystem based on a, a, a partnership of two parties to really help the customers on his journey uh, to personalize his future, uh, his furniture, his home, and also his clothes. So that's uh, an ecosystem. Um, okay, this is uh, um, not the use case uh, in the, from the API space. Uh, let's uh, uh, talk about uh, a real API case with the same plot. Um, some years ago, I was invited by Daimler to, to go to Stuttgart uh, in Germany to give their talk, and there they presented me a really, in the first, a really boring API. So they said, listen, we are a, a car manufacturer, and what we created was a, a trunk API. So you could uh, uh, open a trunk um, with an API call. And I was just thinking, oh God, um, that's completely, yeah, not so uh, relevant, so to speak, um, because who would actually use such a, a, a trunk opening app? I mean, so I just asked them, but who is going to use that? The driver who sits in the car and just wants to open via app uh, a trunk? And they said, no, it's DHL. And then I thought, okay, DHL? Okay, tell me more. And then they showed me this really nice ecosystem story. So just imagine um, you're just an employee uh, uh, in the office working whole, all day long, and you get an SMS from DHL that you weren't at home, so they could, couldn't uh, deliver the package. And you have to reschedule it, uh, be at home, not at the office, to really get this package. So this is really a, a, a annoying situation. I think uh, all of us were in this situation already. So what does the, the trunk API and DHL? So um, the car provides the geolocation to DHL. And you can say to DHL, don't deliver it to my home, deliver it to the location of my trunk <coughs> or the, uh, the car. So the DHL uh, um, employee comes with the package, comes to the car, finds it, uh, requests a, a kind of a, a, a consent that uh, he's allowed to open the trunk. So he sends the, uh, the request, he gets back from the, from the owner, uh, uh, an access token, a one-time access token, so he can just open the trunk once, put in the package, uh, finish the delivery, and the employee gets a notification that the, uh, that the package was delivered successfully. And when uh, um, it's, um, he finished work at five, he goes to, or she goes to the car back and just has the package in her hand. And that's really uh, uh, the cool thing here. So you see a uh, trunk API, which sounds really um, uh, the wrong path, but uh, they had much more in mind. So they had really a collaboration with DHL uh, to use the car, the trunk of the car as a new delivery location. What Daimler achieved here, they're not, they are not just a, a car manufacturer anymore, not just uh, transporting people from A to B, but it's kind of a, um, a mobile protected safe where uh, you can deliver packages and maybe much more in the future. Um, so that's a really cool case of two companies from different industry collaborating together uh, on, on, a on a customer problem. But how was that possible? How can we uh, recreate something similar? And that's about... Uh, the right perspective. So you can't just build business ecosystems based on the products or offers that you have, but you should build ecosystems around the customer journey. So instead of your company, your products, your offers are in the center of everything and customers or partners come to you, you think rather 
of the customer in the center and his customer jobs, his customer journey, and then find the right partners, collaborate with them to provide a better, complete, total experience to the, to the customer. So it's not about the small experiences where you just uh, relieve a customer pain, but really provide a complete solution for, for, for customer problem or for a bigger customer problem. And that's why it's actually the, the death of the competition. So because BMW isn't, can't compete in this kind of ecosystem, uh, they can just uh, create another ecosystem that just do, does the same or participate in this ecosystem. But you see here that uh, the thinking of industries and then competing with other uh, uh, companies that provide similar products or offers, it's kind of obsolete in the area of business ecosystems because the solutions that are solved in an industry are much smaller than in, in an ecosystem. And in the ecosystem, you have the big picture. You're solving big picture, provide a total customer experience. And that's what facilitates uh, the life of the customers immensely. So think rather of business ecosystems instead of, let's say, more the obsolete way or traditional way of industries because the competition will happen between business ecosystems or within ecosystems to really get the place or uh, um, justify your place in, in an ecosystem. And that's uh, um, one important graph uh, or a, a, a picture from, from the book uh, uh, from, by James Moore, uh, by the death of a competition. It, this book is about business ecosystem. It's rather an old book, so from the year 2000, I guess. Um, but it has a lot of uh, um, insights that still holds. For instance, here in the uh, dark gray circle, that's the traditional business or the industry or a company in the industry. They make some sales, they make profits, they invest in research <clears throat> and so on to improve their uh, product and offers. That's a continuous cycle. But with the business ecosystems, you also uh, partner with other companies but it also means that you have to help other businesses uh, or your partners in this ecosystem to grow such that you can really grow the complete ecosystem. Um, just imagine, uh, uh, for instance, uh, um, um, the case of Daimler um, or the case of Daimler and DHL. So DHL could really invest into Daimler to, um, or in, in other car companies to really uh, enable them to also uh, provide a trunk API. So DHL then really in a core position to provide all customers that own a car this uh, new delivery uh, method. And with that, they create a business ecosystem on who can compete with DHL in this ecosystem. So not many people because they don't have the partnerships or are, or are involved in this ecosystem. So a really key is not just to in ecosystem, not just to look on your own profit and your offer, but also invest also money into uh, uh, um, the whole co uh, ecosystem and also company. For instance, Intel does it. Uh, um, um, they uh, spend hundreds of millions to support other companies to develop new products, which then use the new features of uh, Intel uh, processors. So that way they can really help other companies to build new products but then they also sell more of their new uh, microprocessor chips. So that's how Intel does it, for instance. Um, so, and how comes the uh, API products into this play? So um, I've said that uh, you shouldn't only uh, um, focus on, on products and offers, and API products are actually this, but APIs or API products it's a new way of thinking of how to collaborate or build business ecosystems with other companies. So instead of just saying, okay, we have in our company, we have uh, um, applications A, B, C, then we provide API A, B, C, we just think, okay, we have the bigger picture customer journey. We have maybe some partnerships or potential partnerships with other companies. Then we look, how can we help those companies to help the customers. So what can we provide to them? And this process is really about the product mindset because um, you need to understand, okay, what are the pain points 
uh, of those customers and the uh, or the, and the partners, and then build from there the API and make it into a product that really uh, creates benefits also to your organization. So that's the whole idea about API products for business ecosystems. And if you make a, um, uh, an overview about what is API product management to really build those API products for business ecosystems, so it's essentially uh, um, three areas. You need to understand uh, uh, if something is desirable within a business ecosystem, which is also evolving, by the way. And also, um, are you able to deliver it? So is it feasible? Do you have the skills? Do you have the data, for instance? Um, and also the right uh, applications and business processes. And third, can you make it a, a viable product? That means that it also provides value to organization. So for the desirable, it's really about questioning, okay, does the customer really want it? And I can uh, bring an example of uh, what we did for, for an NGO. So what they have, they have uh, uh, an assistant transport service that they provide to, for instance, elderly people or other people that uh, uh, have a broken leg, so they can't really use public transport. And they provide this transport service to get these people, for instance, to a medical appointment. So in this uh, scenario you see here on the top right, that's the agency, the NGO that provides this, uh, this service. And on the left side, you have the associations that are just regional associations of the NGO. They are just uh, managing this uh, assistant transport. So they get the calls from the customer to, to order a transport and the association or the call agent there, they will look, okay, which volunteer will, can drive this, uh, this customer to the medical appointment. So they provide uh, the driver uh, a briefing who they have to get or transport and to where, and then they get transported to the medical appointment. And what the, the drivers have to do afterwards, so the volunteering drivers, they have to report back how many kilometers they have driven uh, to just get reimbursement of, uh, 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 for instance, the, the gasoline that they just uh, used for the, uh, for the ride. So um, that was really painful. So the volunteers were really uh, um, not so happy because they want to help other people, so the people in need, but not uh, write all day the reports. So what we did was a design sprint to really get all the stakeholders uh, and people involved uh, on the same table. And then we, um, we analyzed the scenarios, we identified the point points, and the pain points for the drivers were, work, were really these reports. So depending if the customer is uh, paying by bill or just by cash, they had to fill out the green report or yellow report, and they have to collect it over a month or over a year and then send everything back to the, to the association. And that's quite cumbersome because they are just volunteering drivers. They want to do good thing and not reporting about uh, the good things. And for the employees or from the NGO, they just, just get tons of reports that they have to fill in into a, an information system to get just a, a, um, the financial stuff ongoing uh, to, uh, to bill or charge the customers and also uh, uh, provide reimbursement to the volunteers. So what we did then was uh, uh, we invented an app or uh, developed an app that helps the drivers uh, um, to get their rides, but also uh, in combination with Google Maps to just uh, automatically calculate how many kilometers they, are, they drove. And this information gets automatically uh, um, sent to the association. So the drivers don't have to fill reports anymore. So this is a typical case of, let's say, of the inner circle before you have a, a product, you have a service, you are just, you are uh, um, improving it to reduce costs, to reduce friction, to uh, increase the revenue or whatever, which is totally fine, <clears throat> but it's, it wasn't enough for us. So we thought about how can we do it uh, better? And we thought about, okay, let's expand our, uh, our big picture, not just, okay, what's the NGO, who's the people, who are the people in need and who are the volunteers, but it's also, um, the hospitals, the, the, the medics, the doctors, they're also involved. They're also stakeholders. What about if we increase the scope 
of a uh, fall product. And then we thought, okay, instead of um, letting um, the end customer reserve uh, a ride with our agency, we provide the medics, uh, the medical doctors or hospitals an API with uh, what they can really order the transport for the customers. So the customers get an appointment by the doctor and the doctor in the, in the same process create um, order uh, an assisted transport for the customer. So the customer has less to do and the doctor gets some benefits because um, they don't, they can really be sure that uh, the, the customers get uh, uh, on point or in time to the appointment and the association has less uh, work to do and just manages around the volunteers. So that with that, we really increase the scope of just our NGO to ecosystem and created partnerships with a, a medical doctor and medical doctors. And that's uh, also what's uh, presented here. So you have usually your Dana Circle, your uh, company with your product and offers, and then you have an extended enterprise where you have some partnerships. And then in the third layer, really open it to the business ecosystems where you don't just think, okay, there's a customer kind of a supply chain. Uh, I have some suppliers. I have some people that buy from me, but really an ecosystem to um, look into a, a bigger picture, like a customer journey and find new partnerships to uh, provide products and offers to them to create a, a total uh, experience or a total solution. And how to find uh, um, the right API product. So there are some methods like this uh, VPI canvas or the value proposition canvas. And it's uh, uh, derived from the value proposition canvas from uh, Mark Osterwalder, who also invented the business model canvas. And it's uh, um, it consists essentially of two kind of parts. On the right side, you have the customer profile where you describe uh, the jobs to get done of the customer and his pains to get really the jobs, uh, jobs done. And also the gains, uh, how to provide him some more gains uh, for his processes. And then on the left side, you have kind of the, the applications, the business processes, the data that you have in your companies. And then you define some pain relievers and together that's the value proposition. And based on that, you can then formulate the APIs to provide the interface to these value propositions. And that's how you identify API products. And uh, as I said before, it's not just about small pieces of, uh, um, of uh, pain points that you want to solve. In a business ecosystem, you want to have the complete scope, the complete customer journey, uh, and all the jobs to get done, and then derive from there the pains. And then you can uh, either decide that you want to uh, address certain pains, or partner with somebody, with a third party to really solve or relieve these pains. And with that, you build this business ecosystem. <clears throat> so more concrete, you typically start on the, uh, on the right side. You define those customer jobs or jobs to get done. And it was funny, uh, a week ago, I talked to a, a global insurance company. They even now uh, um, will create a new role. It's the customer job owner. So uh, um, that means really, um, I mean, they are focusing on business ecosystems in the insurance uh, uh, industry or um, space, and they really create uh, this role of customer, uh, customer jobs owner. So you define that and then you uh, um, identify the pains. So what are the pains of, uh, uh, of these customers doing these jobs? So in the case of uh, uh, Super Mario, um, the pain, uh, he, what he wants to do is save the princess and the pain is really all these enemies that hinder him to, to save the princess. Or in the case of DHL, um, the customer just wants to get the package delivered, but the pain is he's usually not at home. And then we uh, define or look inside of your company, what do we actually have? What data do we have? Uh, what business process do we have? What applications? And from that, we can, uh, um, with design thinking and so on, and create value propositions, and then create uh, uh, or define APIs on top of these value propositions. And this process, you can really uh, be, become creative. 
For instance, uh, at Swisscom, the Swiss Telco used customer data to provide an identity verification service, service which could uh, uh, or which allowed other companies to verify identities uh, uh, during online registrations of uh, those people without ever uh, uh, providing them the custom data. They just provide us the, 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 the content of the forms or online forms, and we provide them back kind of a score of how much we can trust uh, or we can trust these values. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, that's what I already uh, explained. So uh, identify the customers, collect jobs to get done, uh, Draw also the revenue model. So what we did, for instance, in the NGO uh, example, we really uh, draw the revenue model of what is the NGO, the association, the driver, and also the doctor, and also the customer, where gets what value and what, who uh, provides what value to whom. So in the end, uh, uh, we, the NGO provided some uh, the API uh, and a service to order assisted transport for the medical doctors, medical doctors, uh, provided back some cash and got uh, in return uh, always the patients, uh, the customers that are on time on their appointments, so they lose don't lose time um, to help uh, people and the customers in need they got a free ride. <clears throat> and it's also um, this process, or um, it's also really important to validate those pains. So not just to assume what uh, pains the customers have, but really invite the customers, ask them and validate those pain points. Because if you miss those pain points, you are just creating the wrong product. And then list the, um, all the processes, data, applications that could be relevant. So for that, you really need uh, the experts, uh, people, uh, enterprise architects, software engineers, uh, business analysts that really know the company inside out. They can really can help and identify what kind of uh, resource you have in the in the uh, in the company and to really to leverage them then uh, create the uh, pain relievers define uh, how you want to uh, relieve the pain and so on and so forth <clears throat> and uh, uh, i see that uh, um, the time is uh, slightly going by um, that's in one example of the healthcare organizations how we uh, defined uh, or used the vpi canvas to uh, um, define um, uh, the API product, which was called Transport API. And uh, as a second thing, it's really um, you need to define the API product in the end. And here we have an API product vision board where we de describe the API based on the VPI canvas, like we get the customers, the pains, the problem, and also solutions uh, in terms of APIs. And the value proposition, um, we do the revenue model, cost structures, of course. But um, I will skip to the ecosystem part because that's the more interesting thing. <clears throat> because API products is not just something that you as an isolated company provide and then uh, create a, a value. I mean, you can do that. But in terms of or in the context of business ecosystems, you need to understand the big picture and with whom you can really collaborate to provide more total experience or total solution for a problem. So it's really about uh, um, being aware of the big picture and define an API product for the big picture. So not just a, a, a solution based on the assets that you have, but really identify what value you can provide to an ecosystem that can really solve in a more total experience way uh, the problem of the, of the customer. And then also identify, of course, uh, what role you can uh, play within. And uh, um, ecosystems or business ecosystems are have four stages. So the first stage is really pioneering. That's what we saw, for instance, with uh, Diamond DHL. This was a one-on-one -one collaboration. They created, they had this same vision or, uh, or shared an imagination of how to help customers. They worked on the same customer journey. And that's how you do it. You create a product that's just way better as the status quo, like uh, not delivering uh, at home, and build from that and build synergies. 
Like for instance, also um, IKEA with uh, with Lego, they provide new storage boxes where you can add just more personalization, play, and so on. And then you try to expand, as uh, for instance uh, uh, Lego did. They included cooperated uh, with Levi's, so you have really this uh, uh, kind of uh, three uh, um, uh, three parties in this ecosystem, like IKEA for the furniture and storage, Lego that provides storage and uh, um, personalizations and Levi's that you not only can uh, store in a uh, IKEA furniture, but also go outside with the Lego personalizations and have fun with it. And then as a third uh, stage, you need really to become an authority, really get kind of a lock-in in the business ecosystem, become not the center, but kind of a keystone player of an ecosystem, provide a value to the ecosystems via, for instance, platforms, to really become a crucial player of this ecosystem, to really uh, um, also help to compete to potential competitors in the new ecosystem. And then renewal by um, adding new idea, core evolve in the ecosystems, because it's not a project in the end, because uh, partners grow, create new services, customer problems uh, um, are changing or moving, and you have constantly adapt. And that's where API product management really helps because it's kind of a continuous monitoring of the pains of the customer churns and also the ecosystem. And then you can adapt your API product really to the needs to best uh, uh, provide value to the ecosystem. And that's uh, um, uh, my conclusion for the uh, for this uh, keynote. And if you are interested, uh, here we have a link to, to the book, API product management, where we are uh, currently finalizing the last chapters, also with uh, business ecosystems. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, Hansi. Yeah, that's a really great um, talk and full of really interesting examples of companies working together, finding adjacent um, value propositions, etc. And I like learning new acronyms. And so VPI, I'll put up there along with API. <laughs> Um, I'm afraid we've run out of time for questions, but if you're joining us in the spatial chat afterwards, I'm sure people will be able to uh, uh, come and ask you uh, directly or uh, um, they can reach out to you uh, by your social media um, and uh, the um, your URL. So API is a product.com. Okay, thanks a lot, Amancio. Thanks for joining us.